I wasn't I wasn't ready for that. You know what she doesn't win though? Uh the number of arms. Vadasi's got a good Vadasi's got everyone beat there. She's got four. Oh yeah, Vadasi's got that one locked down. Although it depends. Do you count Charnox? Are they all legs or They're all legs. Are we counting limbs? Then I guess I guess if we're counting limbs, then he and uh Vadasi are tied, because then they would each have six. But then, yeah. Oh goodness. Kajir, do, you, do you count Kajir's tail as a as another limb? It seems like he uses it as an appendage. Mm, yeah, because it holds a weapon. Yeah. So. So that's like five. So he's second. Yeah. Oh man, I, this is this is only a weird thing to think about. I've never actually thought of this. <laughs> Still waiting. Ashlyn. For Ashlyn has six. If you count Kador. Yeah, because Kador doesn't have legs, but she's got arms and legs. Oh, first first band. We can, we can there stop we go. Siren. <laughs> sirens band. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't they don't want to play sirens and they don't want to play Amber Grove. Uh, that's respectable. I don't think a lot of people really want to play Amber Grove at a competitive level. We saw a really good uh, game of it last game, but it was it was a little crazy. Yep. And then the Ember being the second ban. Uh, so I just want to bring out the uh, the point that was made in chat. Uh, Grizama definitely wins the number of limbs because she's got two arms, two legs, and then she has three hands. You know, two normal hands and then a mega hand. That's true. I, I you know I I think I would count the mega hand as a limb because it's kind of got an arm on it, but I don't know if the hands just the hands themselves count as a limb, right? I, I think they do. Yeah, they could. They could do. This is really funny. So what do you think out of the four left? Where do you think we're going to go? Because Galantic has this pick. I mean, Ward's still in the map pool. I think we, we might see that. Sanctum! A Sanctum pick. We haven't seen okay. a Sanctum game all, all broadcast, I think. Yeah, we haven't. Oh my gosh, the classic. Sanctum and this is Shadow Wizard's pick. I get, I, my guess is maybe Ward. Evan's word for Shadow Wizard? Heaven's Word wanted to play Ghost Reef, I believe. That was what we saw when they were fighting Spectre, so maybe they'll prioritize that again. Maybe, yeah. It is Ghost Reef. I called that. Called it. High five to myself. Anyway. <laughs> so now we have what is left, the two new maps. So if we go to a game three, you'll be happy either way, because it'll be the two new maps. Just a breath of fresh well, air. Well, I mean, Big Row. Big Row isn't, isn't really... I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the hugest fan of Pickerel. Well, I don't know. I think. Uh, I think there's room for it in my heart. I just think people need to get used to it. But we'll see. It's 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 a coin flip either way. So uh, so, <laughs> fifty percent chance you'll be happy. Fifty percent chance. Trip you ban be happy. on Sanctum Falls. I guess they want to pick Amani, maybe. Yeah, that's that's pretty smart. So they have to respond with an Amani ban. That would be the smartest play, but we'll see if they want to just do like a comfort ban against someone that they're uh, someone that they know maybe on Galantic, like being really strong contender for whoever. Uh, but yeah, I can't imagine a world where you let Amani go first pick on Sanctum Falls. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you don't have the trip to counter her. Like you don't have the trip, you don't have the Rutger because Rutger is, is shadow banned for this tournament. Um, so the only other thing that you might have is Wu, uh, and. I mean, Wu's a very good character. Wu, Wu's, a, Wu's kind of contention on the top of most of my lists. <laughs> most of the tier lists that I yeah. do. At least the serious ones. I would have to agree with that being a Wu main. So, uh, yeah. If they if they don't ban Amani and it goes over to Galantic's side, like that's definitely, a, that's definitely a crutch that they have to overcome somehow. Which, you know, it, I... it could be on Sanctum Falls. They might end up just choosing to fight... Uh, they might just choose to fight on the other point. They might choose to fight on D and kind of keep control of that instead of the bridge. It is going to be mean, you know, I think that's yeah, Picaro for the last one. The I, I think the that's probably the argument that they're having right now between themselves is, hey, we can we can. They probably had a ban <clears throat> lined up beforehand for for a map like this that they wanted to use, assuming that their opponent would would ban Amani out. Yep. Now they're having the conversation saying, hey, do we want to use our ban on Amani? Or do you think that we have a reasonable answer to it that can actually pressure it enough? Yeah, and this is all... If you don't, then you have to ban it out. Yes, and this is all assuming that they will pick Amani. We're taking, like, a huge assumption here. And it is it is super unlikely that she won't be picked because it is there's, her best map. There's the ban. Yeah, there it is. You were right. 
I'm just I'm trying to find a reason maybe perhaps not to but honestly I'm just lying to myself 100% she was gonna get banned if she wasn't gonna, or she was gonna get picked if she wasn't gonna get banned there's no possible way so with those two out what do we think is gonna be the start do you think they're gonna because mm. I don't actually know anything about Galantic's team I would guess something okay first pick Margrave Margrave yes. a lot of Margrave priority reasonable. and then we might see like Ashlyn team out as a response yeah this is uh, this is the world that we live in. Oh, the Paco. Paco. Okay. So no. I think Paco's pretty right good now. on sirens. So this would be smart to maybe lock in like Sven Tmat because we know Tmat is a very very high priority range damage dealer. She's probably one of the best range damage in the game. You know, at least as far as just being super flexible and and uh, necessary for all compositions. It is. It's exactly Sven what I Tmat. said. <laughs> yeah. There's there's no way. And now, and now it kind of opens up a little bit because there's a lot of options for Shadow Wizard Money Gang on who they want to take as their assassin or their or their melee or their range. Sorry, locking in um, the Ramsey potentially here. Ramsey's interesting. I think they will probably pick a ranged at this point. My guess would be like Beckett, Beckett, or maybe the sneaky Charnock. I kind of like Oru in this comp right now. A little bit, yeah. That's a that's a fair point to bring Charnock up. Charnock also fills the same kind of. It's a it's a lot of CC if it ends there. up being Oru, but it is Charnock. Charnock. I'm on fire this match. I don't know what's yeah. I don't know what's gotten into me, but here we are. All right, can I keep it up? That's the question. What do we need on the enemy team, or what do we need on Galantic's team right now? We need someone who can confirm kills. Uh, so like an assassin. There's not a lot of choice left. I guess we could. Taito's, Taito's pretty good. Yeah, we could um, bring in the Lincoln. sneaky Taito. There's still Wu on the table. So I think either I of don't them. think Wu, I don't think you're drafting for Wu at this point. Is that a Zenobia hover? Zenobia. Ooh, I wasn't ready for that. I, I, I am. Never, I never would have thought of I'm that. I'm so into it. I thought that was going to be something for Shadow Wizard. It makes it honestly their their comp looks like it really hates a Zenobia. You get you get mass applied poison. You put your your CC down on the Ramsey and just start slamming into him with your Margrave and your team at. Yeah, it is a it is definitely a, a nice little soft counter to the amount of kind of frontline that they have. If it, it depends really on if Ashlyn's gonna go spectral wave or if she goes melee. We've seen a lot of spectral waves. No way! It's Zenobia, Ezrin, Gall. They're bringing in the Ezrin. So the only answer they have to Ezrin right now, at least poison wise, is from Ramsey. So this is a this is a little bit of a of a random crutch pick kind of soft countering themselves but it is it is also going to be game one so we're not like galantic's not too worried if they win or lose but they also did pick this map so i feel like you want to i feel like you want to you know have your advantages if you're first yeah pick. this is uh i think i mean the ezran pick looks okay it looks it looks fine they have a, pr a pretty close range comp and ezran really thrives and stuff like that yeah the... Thinking from what's the last pick for Shadow Wizard Money Gang? I think it's. I mean, I, I okay, figured it was. I figured it was going to be a poison source. It, my my guess was going to be Bowden or maybe Beckett with the poison grenade or like. I was thinking Zon. Kajir. Kajir works too. Kajir doesn't anti poison, but but, but, but but uh, yeah, Kajir doesn't have poison. I don't think. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. But I'm, oh no, he does. He does. Or, That's right. I'm on his E. I, what am I thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm completely out of my mind right now. Um. But yeah, because you actually would have been really strong. But Bowden is is uh, is safe as well. It gives them another ranged option because you don't want to you don't really want to put another melee into this team with the Zenobia and uh, the and an Ezra. Yeah. I yeah, I would and and Ezrin as well. Shadow Wizard Money Gang taking early control over the uh, C point. Oh, it sounds like we have a feed. We do have a feed. Nice. Let's go to our feed then. All right. So we're seeing early 2020 point. Uh, Shadow Wizard Money Gang took the uh, the grand the uh, D side early, and uh, and they just went to the other side as well. But they pushed through for a bloomer push, and it's quarter HP already. Yep. So we're we're seeing kind of the the control Galantic holding on to the ridge. Duggar's getting really low. And Shadow is He's going to go to the back of this fight and try to put a little bit of damage in, but every single time he hits, his health is not regenerating, and there is a Ramsey coming around to oh find you, buddy. Oh my gosh! There it is. He just knew where he, he was. Found. 
is a and this Zenobia is really low in the middle too. Ramsey's gonna be down to a eighth HP, so he's gonna need to do some fancy moves to find his way out here with Sven hitting him. He might go down here. He will eventually go down to the Sven, but that will be a trade. 60 to 80 for Galantic. There's just so much going on immediately off the bat. Just two for two in the end, and uh, uh, S M or Shadow Wizard Money Gang still uh, on the on the aggressive point here. So they killed the creature. They killed three in that skirmish. And uh, now it'll be in a 100 to 60 push in the favor of Gren. It, yeah, and Galantic has, like I said in the draft, they do have the ability to pressure these wounds. This is not a, a comp that we've seen before where they have, like, they do have some brawlers, but they don't really have someone who can, who can make space for their range. No, Paco will make space for his range, and there will be damage coming out. However, Cryptic finds that a team at can really take his health down really fast. The other players go to the wound and take it down, but uh, Kronk and Cryptic will both fall in response to that. Yeah. 20 power ahead for Shadow Wizard Money Game. Yeah, that was very, very smart to just kind of, I mean, I don't think they intentionally let the wound get taken, but if they are gonna just go hard for that, they find these skills on the back end, force two deaths. Now Shadow Wizard Money Game can't really defend this D point. Oh, he falls in the water. That, did, did, did that kill him? Yeah, he was. He must yeah, have been low. Dead. He was low. He didn't. He didn't pop out the other side. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So Ramsey all coming down, and he'll be in the middle of the fight. That poisons everybody. So Zenobia can't really stay alive. She will fall down shortly afterwards, and Ezrin's in trouble on the back. There's a lot of low players for Shadow Wizard Money Gang. Fifty to fifty after the fight, and another point will come through for collecting Abner. Ramsey has to get out of here, and Teamat is chasing him. If you can find that last shot, he will fall over. And both teams, the, just a just a constant, you know, we've seen this in other games. Just the the constant inability to like really know when to actually fully retreat and take your victory. Like uh, Sh Shadow Wizard Money Gang, no, I'm sorry, Galantic had three kills there. They ki they killed two, and they also took out the creature. They could have just left. Like they were super ahead at that point, you know. You you still have control of D. You have you have control of the better point on this map, and you were you were a rotation and a half ahead. You might as well just take your victory and let them come to you because they would have to. Going around to attack this bloomer here, and the Paco will be taking a lot of damage at the start of the fight. Team that's up on the cliff, starting to pound into these backliners, so they won't have long to stand here. They're gonna have to do something about that. He has to fall off, and Zen P's too low to continue the fight with his Margrave. Yep, and then the the threat of all the damage going on over there, it actually fully allowed for the uh, the Cyclops to get disrupted just because he was in combat. So now we have another push here for Shadow Wizard Money Gang because no one was even on the other side to interrupt that creature. And we saw that they can kill these wounds super quickly. I mean, they took the power from it, but they're still down. They like Shadow Wizard Money Gang got at 20 extra power from this last push, but they still didn't get the rampage. And now there's damage coming in on Liren's forehead. You see how much damage this Vodin and the Charnock can do together. And this Brawl Comp can't stop them in time. Ezra will press his ultimate to try to get some people low, but this wound might just fall. One second left. Oh, wow, what a recovery. They barely that pulled really that nice through. Save. It just and like Muscle Man's gonna fall because of it. It was like all the damage was front loaded, and then all of a sudden it just slowed down it bit by bit. Once again, Galantic finding two kills on the retreat, maybe a third here. Cryptic kinda low. They're running away. But no, they're just probably just gonna take the creature. No, they're they wanna chase it. This is really this is really not a good idea. I would have rather just them go and uh, go and attack it. Yeah, this is a. Uh... I think that they should I mean, they, oh, this is a big fight coming out. Ramsey's going to pop his ultimate and try to get some evasion down, but it's probably not going to be enough. He's on half HP hitting these backliners, and they are all so low. It is plenty for Ramsey to do his job. I have no idea how that Zenobia got out there. He, she was on like a quarter HP, not even a quarter HP. Duggars is alive with just a sliver. Yep. And we're resetting here yet again. We, I mean, Shadow Wizard Money Gang is ahead. But Galantic kind of re uh, took their power, their uh, their control back of the space. Galantic said. You think they? Galantic has sixty. Oh yeah, Galantic is that. Sorry. <laughs> no, wait, no. Shadow Wizard Money Gang has the. Uh... Oh no, no, you're right. Never mind. Galantic has the weird comp. It's okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's all right. You're stressed. 
It's a lot of fights happening here in the middle right now. That that uh, Cyclops doing a bit of damage, but they're they're trying their best to give it a little bit of poke. They're defending quite well. They just need to let it reset and capture this power, but they're not letting it. Or they'll find a kill somewhere done. here. Ramsey yeah, low. He's run away here. He's no. really low, and he will be collected. Yep. So even though the creature didn't capture, Ramsey's sticking in his nose a little too far. Look how low that Cyclops is, actually, if we go over to it. That Cyclops was super, super low. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> that that's a, a sliver of HP left such a thing. such a clutch defense. And it was I mean, it was it was half a dozen one way and one or the other. So or however that phrase goes, they're actually not going for this push, though. Yeah, they're... I don't think they actually have the damage for the wound. So they can try to collect this creature. But Shadow Wars are getting caught on and realize that they're not actually going for it. Yep. So now they're kind of repositioned here. Perhaps they they, they probably know, or they should know at least, that that Cyclops is super low. So that's a really quick, easy power. They've healed it quite a lot. Like, it's back to health, or, or half health. Muscle Man taking some pot shots into C. Sounds like he hit one. It's a really, really uh, interesting take on the extended burn on the, uh, on the LMB. Don't see that very often on Charnak. Usually you want to opt for the doing more damage to creatures that are burning. We'll see. They're just going for this. Nice reflex on some of these things. Yeah, spend <laughs> That's taking fun. this time just to heal their creature back up. Yep. I think they probably should have tried to initiate something while that creature was low if they could. Yeah, even at half, I still think there was a potential to go hard. But it's also really dangerous. Ooh, big leap. Yeah, Bowden gets a little poke on the back line, and that makes Margrave go in on the front. Paco is getting really low from this team at ultimate. He's got to be kind of careful. He's getting chased on the way out, but it doesn't look like he's falling yet. Okay, Duggars will collect him, and Nat 4 falls a little bit before that. The uh, Ramsey ultimate gives him a little bit of space, but he's fighting a Cyclops and two other players, and that's just not enough. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's more or less exactly what I was about to say before the fight really fully commenced there. If they do go in for it, it's really difficult because they don't actually have an escape. So now Panda Sniper is kind of stuck in this really weird place where where he needs the help of his Ashton to get out. And they, they do manage, most likely. But now they're down by 20 because of that push. So they've got to figure out something else. They can go around the backside. Maybe they can, you know, catch a pick in a different way. But they got to do something. They got to do something fast. And it looks like it's going to be the, the back cap for B. Yeah, they need, to, they need to run around to B, I think. This would probably be, if they can go to B, force a fight... Look at him go. Stop the, the collection. I mean, they don't even necessarily have to stop the collection, but they are responding. Well, if they stop the collection for long enough, then, then he collects for them. Yeah. A little bit of a miscommunication there, yeah. seems like, for Shadow Wizard. Like, they, the, the other part of the team didn't really go in. No, no. They waited for the rotation off, and now they're hitting the midpoint. Yeah. I think they. I just think they but could have gone a little bit sooner. Yeah, Galantic realized what was going on, and they went back for the midpoint. Charnak ult gets burned, but it's just not enough damage on the creature. Both creatures are going to be at half HP, and the Rampage comes through. And Galantic having 90. This is only the first wound marker, though, so we'll see if it actually is enough to uh, to be an auto wound, or if it's a... Uh, or, or if it'll have a little sliver. It was a smart try at trying to bait a rotation, and Zenobia's gonna try to push the ultimate to save herself. She will it get out. It is an auto. It, it, it was a really smart uh, try at a play to, to force their rotation and then use that time to take C. I think if they they committed their players, maybe, it sounds crazy, but just a, they, they stuck around for a little longer or, or stayed a little deeper. That that push was being lost no matter Team what. Team a little you ahead? Nice catch Tigers, here. Yeah, he's a little bit too deep. The catch there on the, on the team at there. I don't know, really know what was going on. She didn't really need to be over there. Maybe she was just scouting, but like she was all the way in the hallway. Yeah, burned the focus too and didn't really get much out of it. Yeah, so we, this is our last uh, rampage before Clash. Yep, so regardless of if the wound uh, gets taken or not, we will move on to the other arena. Once again, this little fight between Voden and Teamat over on the other side. We've been getting treated to, to some uh, great games of Gigantic today. These have all been very close. Yep. Ooh, opting for an upgrade here. This is very, very dangerous, and hopefully yeah. Shadow Wizard Money Gang like catches on. 
This is it's a it's a hedge play because if they get this off, the the Cyclops level two Cyclops in this point is very hard to fight off. It's only Margrave right there defending it. They're trying again to do this kind of this uh, switch play. They hardly actually did any damage to it. It's fully summoned. Shadow Wizard definitely could have done a lot more there, and they're just not really taking these uh, opportunities. That would have been. Looks like they might be trying to upgrade C now as well, maybe. Perhaps. Yeah, they did end up or doing D, that. So, or sorry, C, not D. Or D, not C. Gosh. Yeah, so D is. But there's an E rotation coming in. They forced the fight on E, and now those players have to respond to this. Muscle Man's in there trying to do as much damage as he can, and the Paco will fall. They find Bronson a kill. collects that one. The blue and the will creature. Fall shortly afterwards, and now it's 80 to 70. They just have to leave. So they can kind of. Yeah, they just back off and wait for the B. They have to leave. B will capture Fower first, because creatures capture Fower faster than players do. So if, yeah. if they don't summon, if they're not quick on the summon, I mean, I would probably keep someone back there to stall, maybe, perhaps, but this is kind of difficult at the moment. There's so much going on over there. King Koopa's trying to find what he can here, and Team At will fall because of it, but the power will come through just in time. Yep. So that kill does not matter. If they found another one on the Margrave just a little bit sooner, it could have been a Rampage for them. But this is going to go into Clash with 2-2 two to two for both teams. Yeah, and they only just now respawned on E. You know, like, this was this was the point of kind of realizing that Shadow Wizard wasn't actually keeping up on their own creature uh, capacity. So now they have this 100-100 push when it really should have been 100 to maybe like 80 or 70. Do you ever start spawning creatures other than boomers on D? If, you're, if your team is, like, if you're losing them so much. And this level 2 creature will go down. Yep. Not quite yet. They're it's, waiting for the vulnerability. Yep. This is smart. They're being smart. They realize that they're on D, and they'll take the level 2 creature because of it. Yep. Now, the downside is they have to plant this thing really quickly. If they don't... Oh, I, I believe it was a little too late. The, no, they got no, it. They got it. No, but they now they have it. to okay. get there. <laughs> Look how far ahead yeah. Galantic the is. The thing, though, is they're already super far ahead of them, so by the time that they get in, that creature might be dead. So they're going to kill this level 2 off, and it won't give them any power. Actually, they might just be skipping over it. Are they splitting their players? I'm not sure if they want to actually... Yeah, they are going to choose to take this. This is a, this is very peculiar, because now they've summoned a creature, they gave over power, and they lost control of the point all at the same time. So I'm not really sure what the idea was there. Like, did they think they could just get there a lot faster? Oh, they're going for A. They're going for the creature on A right now. Yeah, that, that was my idea, was you just keep pushing with this. If they're all the way on the other side of the map, just try and take their power. It's already on the map. So did the, the creature. Now they need to get out Fire of there. Was 30 ahead as well, so they don't really have to do anything here. Even after this power collection, they'll, it'll be a... Oh, the point. trap of the Margrave. Margrave is stuck, and he has to burn his focus to get out of there safely. Team at will focus to back him up, but there's not much really coming from that. It's crazy how fast that Team at Ultimate charges up. Yes. Oh my god goodness. Uh, Team at gets her focus super super quick. And it's really powerful even at just rank one, even after nerfs. Like it's it's quite crazy. It's a little silly. But this is kind of where I expected the fight to eventually go. Yeah, they're going back to this creature again and the bloomer's just gonna fall so quickly. Like what point at what point do you start planting a little bit tankier creatures? Because you can see like they're here, but just a couple seconds late. But the Paco wall comes down. Zenobia's going to have to burn hers in response to get out of there. Oh. I think that's a good trade if you're the Zenobia player. You don't, I mean, like, your ultimate is not crazy useful. I'd rather take the Paco ultimate, but this will be an auto wound. So Shadow Wizard Money Gang finding, despite the, uh, despite the weirdness of trading off C for seemingly no reason <laughs> with, with their own little baby creature. They still get the push. It will be an auto wound, and they're going to just kind of quickly reset, reposition. And they're upgrading to a... Was that a level 2 dragon Dragon that I saw on C? Uh, maybe? Yes. Yeah, oh. So this creature is going to fall so quickly. It's though. already it's dead. Down to 20 free power for Shadow Wizard Money Gang, and that's really scary because they're on one wound now, and Ezra's in the back line sucking everyone's life out. Muscle Man will fall over. But there's still 10 power ahead on Shadow Wizard Money Gang. But now if Shadow Wizard Money Gang might have stayed a little bit too long. Now they're getting pressured. They've only got this bloomer to help them. Margrave will find a couple of people and Paco will fall over because of that. Ashland has to put one down for spacing, but Margrave 
is looking really unhealthy. Did he make his way out of there? I don't think he did. so. That's amazing. No, they no, he did. You're right. Oh my goodness, that's gotta be less than 200 health, like easily. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, this creature is still alive, too. I would have thought that this thing would have fallen by now. Somehow, Shadow Wars and Muddy Gang has found themselves in a position where they're on the power differential. They, they're they missing 20. They were ahead by 20, and now they're they're behind. Big Sven ultimate. That must have been three or four players. Uh, everyone has to get out of here, but Panda Sniper can't get out in time. And now we're 30 ahead. Galantic can just relax here. They need one kill or just doing nothing. Yep. There's they, the kill. They did find the kill there. It'll be a hundred to sixty. Yeah, on. that's a big impact push. And Margrave, to get out of here. Margrave just gets out of there yet again with that low, low health. They're they're keeping these uh they're keeping these plays and kind of taking advantage of Shadow Wizard not really being able to get out of these fights quick enough. Like they they go in and they got that adult creature, like they got that adult dragon. And then they couldn't just back out. Like, for whatever reason, they struggled to really reposition and, and uh, get themselves back to a safe place. Thank you. They just can't do the wound, though. Yeah. It's just not possible. The Cyclops on that point is super smart. It stops their pushes. Their their comp, the, Galant the Galactic Galantic comp, does not have an easy way around this Cyclops wall. Yeah, but now the Shadow Wizard running are once again going to go around and try to fish for A. They kind of trade off the points here, but one has the power rotation, the other doesn't. They found it anyways. I think you should have you should have stood on on uh, E there with your Cyclops. I think that's you. I think that's the answer to this comp really in that specific position. I would have more preferred if they actually stuck around to try to defend A. If they were just going to take that power and trade off either way, they might as well have actually tried to fully get the power. But it was taking quite a while, so it maybe would have been a little too dangerous. In the end, no matter what, an even trade. But they do have to resummon another creature. Now this Drake's back down to level 1 and at already a 3 quarters of HP because Muscle Man's popping into it. Ooh, nice snowball. They have to open this up for him. And Ashlyn can't quite do it with her ghost. Oh, goodness. t bats going uh, just slightly under the wall. Yeah. Almost made it. A little bit too low there. Trying That's to okay. Just... It'll be back in 30 seconds. Yeah, trying to, do... <laughs> trying to do something a little ambitious. Not quite. They're still even here, but they're they're keeping this power. Margrave's in, and Ezrin is following up. Muscle Man's looking really low here. He will fall to the to the uh, Ezrin goal on the Margrave dive. Paco ult defensively, and Panda also burning his ult defensively. That's a lot of focuses down. And now this creature is going to fall, and they're 20 ahead on Galantic. Yeah, they found a kill. They found the creature. Once again, just ahead by a full rotation. This is kind of the power. The three goes now. This is kind of the power of this middle point of D. Or, sorry, C. Because you have that creature that can support you. Especially a dragon. It is almost impossible to really defend your own side. Because it's constantly just peppering down those electric bolts. Doing those siege yeah, attacks. No, keeping is, you in combat. I don't think this is an auto. It says it is, but I don't think it should be, right? It will be very close. I think it actually might be, because we're quite late in the game. This is only the second wound. So I think it actually is an auto. Let's see. Yeah. Boom. Oh, wow. That was a big auto. Yep. So now we are evened up with Galantic having kind of the upper hand here. You know, even even going around to do those back caps that Shadow Wizard Money Gang have done, they, they are constantly just losing their footing on the E point. Yeah, it's looking, it's starting to look pretty rough as they get more of these levels at this point. This this kind of brawl comp with these, like, uh, uh, spell cleave, as I was saying, where they're just finding really good ways of cleaving the tank and the damage down at the same time. Yeah, just look them go in. Kill the Kator immediately. Ashlyn's not really influential anymore. And she's got to get out with no defensive, uses her ult to resummon. And Charnock defensively, but this Bloomer's looking really low. They might just take this thing and say, that's good for us. Yeah. Shadow Wizard Money Gang just doing so many resources. And goes in and gets a two-man ult on two low players in the back line there. We didn't really see that, but Sven has to run out now. Does not get collected, and Panda gets killed in the response. So now they just walk backwards with this Margrave right-click. And, and Duggars is looking for what he can on the back line. It looks like he will collect the Ashland. 
And they're going in to try to collect this power on E. Just the constant flank on both sides. It's just taking us all by surprise. But this, this hallway here is so incredibly impactful. The AoE from the team at the AOE from the Ezra and right mouse button probably made like the two size uh, soul fire upgrade so that they explode in this large radius. Just the CC from Margrave, like this is all so difficult to fight against. No matter what the resources Shadow Wizard Money Gang use, they're just losing. I think this is kind of, this is smart from uh, Shadow Wizard Money Gang. You can't let them just collect C for free. You have to take their other piece and hopefully get some kills afterwards. Koopa's going to try to run out the other way. And he will find it out, but there's just no kills coming through. So it's just a 90 to 70. And it looks like they're trying to collect on the C side of the map as well. Yep. Oh, that is the C, but that's, yeah. The, the push will come through at 100 to 70. And that was an interesting focus to use there. I do believe that he was already dead. Yeah, there's nobody got the kill there. So that, that, uh... That team at focus is now not usable on Gren. They probably could have ended the game here, but now yeah, it's going to be a one little bit harder to do. So actually just going to position, try to get D here. Yeah, that's okay. We're just going to take both mid points at this point. Yep. Just prepping it to get low, and then it'll get 10 health. And uh, Shadow Wizard Running Gang's positioning over back to E here. They actually need to be careful. Okay, they are giving it up. No, they did, they did end up killing it, and they're going to spawn an obelisk. They don't want to end up losing the C point if at all possible. They need to get there. Not in it's time. Chonark has enough damage at this point in the game to kill that thing really quick. They can. Shadow Wizard Money Gang and finally get the summon. Really deep, and he's gonna get found by Abner. Now Muscle Man has to back out. He doesn't have his uh, his DPS buddy, and he's really low. A defensive ultimate to try to save his life. And Nietzsche look at this really Ezrin. Burning in that Charnark ult. Look at this he will Ezrin. Fall over eventually. This Ezra's just popping off, like being able to just follow his Margrave every single time, yeah. doing so much AoE damage with the focus, with the soul fires. They they don't so have going down in the back. This Tmat is diving like an assassin. Yep. Tmat's finding these like clever flanks. So like whenever someone gets low and has to retreat back to Gren, they're in, in the middle of an open field. Like that's easy lock on with the LMBs, with the RMBs. Like they're Galantic's playing this so well. Another creature goes down on E. It's a Cyclops this time again. I do I do like the Cyclops pick. I think it, their best fights have been with this. It's just been so close. Yeah, but they can follow up so easily, just kind of moving in that narrow little crack there in the wall, and they go in. Yeah, stopping the power from collecting. The creature's already down to half HP, and they're whamming into this thing as hard as they can, trying to stop it from collecting its power. The Zenobia ult will stop it once more. And now they have to take a fight afterwards to actually take this thing. But actually, not really. The whole of the other team isn't here. It's just Charnock and Ashlyn trying to stop it. The and they're just going to collect this power. Yep. The the other team went in to go it's over done. to stop the obelisk. I don't really like the choice there to, to kind of just get a neutral obelisk that really wasn't providing you anything. Like, they weren't winning these defenses, but it was better than just fully giving up the point. They don't have a lot of wound damage, but they have enough for this. Yeah, this will definitely be the end, unless Shadow Wizard Money Gang pulls off some incredible stellar defense, I, which I don't think is going to be doable. Let's see his... Uh, that's a lot of health on Gren, but there is a team at all coming down, and it's hitting straight into the forehead. Lots of damage coming from that team at him down to like yeah, a, it's done. a third of an HP. It's going to be done for. Another shield goes on, <laughs> and they do have the damage to finish it out. Absolutely done. Slow but steady race from Galantic. And honestly, I mean, really, I just that's kind of what I expected. You know, you keep that middle point and uh, you, you keep a hold of, of C on that high ground. You really just can't do anything. They had no answer. The Margrave, the Margrave was. <laughs> I want to see it. Oh, yeah, I want to see Ezrin's stats too. most kills 17. 72K, so not as much as uh, not as much as it may have looked. Cause the, the that's a lot more than a lot of other Ezrins would be doing. Yeah, Teamat did it, but still doing the most. So here we are. They're ripping and raring. Now, we, we just said that we ban. stopped seeing support bans, but we opened with a Sven ban. Yep. I think the Sven ban is, uh, is very smart. Um, I think the Sven was just kind of, you know, we, we gave a lot of praise to the Ezrin and the Teamat being able to do damage and the Margrave able to engage. But, like, that Sven, I'm, I mean, they had Ashlyn on the team last time. 
So like this is uh this is kind of hoping that perhaps maybe they can snipe Ashlyn first, I'm thinking. And uh Yeah, they are first picking. They they uh they will they're kind of hoping maybe like the healing will not be quite as impactful this time. I think it opens a lot of their draft kind of got taken away by having to find dedicated answers through poison mm -hmm. with the Ramsey and with the Vodin. So I think banning a, uh, a support character early, if they don't really want to play those poison characters, it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. This is also on Ghost Reef, by the way, guys. And Galantic taking the Margrave off, and the they are picking perfect. the Ashlyn. Yep. Called that one. Paco here. It makes a lot of sense. If you ban a support, you kind of have to first pick the other one, I think. And then Paco into Gnosis. We might be seeing a Brawl comp here. Without the Ashlyn is very ambitious, but we could fill it in with a Vadasi. Yeah, we could see Vadasi. We could even see Zandora. We saw that one game that uh, it was uh, Lil Guys that did that one team composition with the Gnosis and Zandora. That was insane. That was, that was our favorite game, I think, of the day. So now we're kind of doing the soft, uh, kind of softly the same thing. But more importantly here, they banned Margrave, and now they've taken two frontliners. So they're really trying to... Uh, they're, That's a good point. They're trying to, like, corner the market here of, of the possible, like, frontline potential. Because who's really left? Aside from Wu? Ramsey. <laughs> Wu, Ramsey, and Zandora. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's the and that's you know that's and none of those picks you're very excited about taking either. Yeah, that's being very generous too. The Ramsey you could be, but I think it's a little bit later in the draft that you want to that you want to consider him. I don't know, like if they if they are gonna try to position to take Zandora as well, they want like as many melee as possible. So if they're if they're uh, if they are wanting to if they're wanting to actually play this brawl comp like you think then maybe they should pick the ramsey away to keep you know to keep that from continuing they're gonna offer yeah, but a team the, okay the they do pick the ramsey away the kind of the traditional answer to the brawl comp is you play like the uh you kind of have one person in the front who might take some licks and, and and can take a little bit of cc and then you just nuke them out of the game with range dps yeah if you can keep your distance then obviously the brawl comp can really only do so much but if they are going to go for the Brawl Comp, they want to not have them enabled as often as possible. But also banning Margrave and then drafting a Brawl Comp is kind of weird. Eh, a little bit. I do agree. So what is the answer here? we got another Zenobia on Galantic's side. They love this pick. Xeno Roland. I like the Roland pick with the Zenobia. It feels like they kind of... Like... They kind of add up to a whole other character together with what they do <laughs> where the the Zenobia is just so so controlling and the Roland also has a little bit of control on him but he has the other half of that where it's the damage that the Zenobia is lacking you know and what Zenobia has the survivability that he's lacking you know what I think actually Galantig might be doing here it's a little bit of a nasty combo that I saw uh I didn't see it in scrims but I did see it in some game that I was playing in so taking Zendora on Shadow Wizard just by the way but what I want to say is that the combination of Paco Focus and Roland Focus is actually disgusting. Because everyone gets frozen, and if that freeze gets shattered, they take extra damage. And then Roland's Focus already does 800 damage. So it's like just a around instantly around 1100 damage to every single person, plus more burning. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, Roland's all just gross by itself. A little, little ridiculous, but it's almost guaranteed to hit. All right, so now we saw Zandora Shadow on Ghost Wizard. Reef yesterday, and it and it looked pretty good. And I think the the Oreo pick also makes sense in this situation. If they want to play this a little bit closer range comp, um, meet them halfway, and and pick this more controlling mage that can kind of make their life hell if they want to run in at you. So, in this sort of composition, I feel like Shadow Wizard Money Gang is hoping that Ramsey will be like their finisher, uh, picking a Mozu finally on the Galantic side. This is a. Uh, these are some teams. There's no healer on the Galantic side, and there's a lot of you know AOE potential on the Shadow Wizard Money Gang side. So this is uh this is very weird, but I, I I like it. This is this is very different than what we've seen before. Rotation right now. There we go. What in the world has happened? <laughs> this Looks is like our spectators got the, the got the ground bug. Yep. Yeah, so uh, don't worry, I've got the uh, I've got the backup poet on here. 
we can turn that off. Is Nord? Yeah, Nord's got it. Nice. Yes, I've got Nord's stream up and going, so we can look at him for a little while. The Shadow Lizard Money Gang finding some clutch kills here, and now ahead by forty points as the as the C point is coming up. Yeah, I mean the this collection probably is not going to go through with the Zandora here. Your E is going to get collected much before that. Um, this is, but the Rampage will come through, so it is a hundred to seventy. Kronkt is very low on that Bloomer, so he's going to need to watch himself a little bit. But they've pulled out now. Yeah, and uh, Shadow Wizard Money Gang getting an 170 push here. This will be a a nice chunk onto Gren, but they are ready for the defense. About half. On yeah, this back. this comp is is pretty scary on the defense too. They they have a lot of CC, but there's uh, even more damage for Shadow Wizard Money Gang. The wound's gone before they even have a chance to start their CC chain. Yeah. Now, can they catch someone on this chase out? Kronk is getting a little bit low. He had to pop his ultimate already, but he will be safe. That team at focus was just so much immediate burst damage, and the wound had no chance whatsoever. <laughs> Look at this big old fight this happening. Is, well, this is kind of what I was talking about, where uh, Shadow Wizard Money Gang gets to play at kind of a mid-range with their team out on one side, their Oro at the other, Ooh. and the Ramsey and Zendora get to kind of just sit back and watch as their range do the damage. Now, Ramsey went in a little bit uh, too deep to try to find a kill, oh, and they're he so just low. barely didn't get him. Now they get to chase the kills, though. Oru gets a clap. Galantic staying so long in those fights. I don't know why they were thinking. I mean, they were trying to find a kill on, on the back end, but it just, it was not worth it. They couldn't kill the creature fast enough. They couldn't secure anything. Then Shadow Wizard Money Gang just re, you know, they regroup. And now again are ahead by 40. This is the exact same thing. They're going to get ahead by 50 getting this creature. Yeah, I mean, we have it. We see them straight out of the gates here, just taking control of this game. This creature is going to fall easily. Try but, I mean, a little bit of a fight on the back line here. They're seeing if they can get a little bit of power to save Grun some health. Oop. Don't know why that happened. Sorry. Ramsey is getting very low, but Gnosis dies before anything happens, and the Mozu alt takes down uh, pretty much nobody before she falls. I thought that was a lot of damage from the Mozu alt, but it was the other way around. And they get a little bit of a. Wait, why in the world did. Lairon did like nothing. They didn't have 100 shield. That should have done way more. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was a full uh, I mean, wound. It did, a, it did your amount. No, it was, a, it was a full amount. I, for some reason, I thought. <laughs> for some reason, I thought they didn't actually get the wound. I literally just said that they did. I'm... It seems like Shadow Wizard Money Gang are kind of just taking the blitz approach to this game they want this to be done very quickly before the uh the zandor or the zenobia and the in the roland start to get their uh talents down yep now zenobia won't find her way out of this fight because there's a z a, a zandy just on top of her gosh these two characters in the game is just a nightmare just and the entire backline falls shortly afterwards with Gnosis turning around finding out that there's none of his teammates there to help him. just yet again it's the exact same thing that just happened. Galantic went so far forward to chase kills after, you know, getting uh, after losing the rampage. They can't secure anything and then they get poked out and have to leave. Well, this is what that's what I was saying in the draft is they're playing at this mid range and waiting for an overcommittance. Yeah. And then the Ramsey and, and Zendora kind of get to go in. I just am confused why they're doing it. <laughs> like they it's the exact Matt same mistake. They might get caught here. He does get Panda Sniper does take a little bit too much damage on that way out. And Muscle Man also gets gored. So he's going to fall in the middle of the air here to the bleed. Or not finding the ability to end the focus there. We're taking some power back on the way. Still a two for two. 100 to end. 70. 100 to 70. I mean, Shadow Wizard, or sorry, Galantic found a little bit of a, like, one kill there. But again, it's just getting getting completely handled in, in every single encounter right now. I don't know. I don't really know what the answer is. Like, <laughs> perhaps perhaps needing to be a little more patient with the, uh, with kind of going for these engages. Resetting yeah, zero I mean, to zero. This is, a, this is this is a really dangerous situation now for Galantic because if they keep trying to do what they've done, where they just try to punish these wounds, which is what you should be doing, is trying to get a punish off of a wound, then you put yourself at risk to just losing your last wound of the game. Yeah. 
Galantic is not finding any ground on these engages, so I feel like they really need to just wait until the D rotation comes up and then try to try to hold on to that. But Shadow Wizard Money Gang was able to summon an obelisk. Galantic hasn't done anything about that. This is looking pretty grim at this point. Zandor is going to fall over, and that's a free 10 points for Shadow Wizard Money Gang. There's this ob mid control as well. I mean, yeah. Like Shadow Wizard Running Gang literally has this in the bag. Like there's there's almost nothing that they can do. They're now two wounds behind. We're in clash after four rampages. It just like th this this match will be shorter than the draft was at this rate. <laughs> yeah. Yep. This uh I mean they're just slightly ahead. If they get like a 90 push, it's not quite done yet. Wizard, Shadow Wizard going in to, onto this bloomer. Galantic still on the back foot, even on their own territory this time. Bloomer's trying to do what it can on the way in, but we're in a 90 to 40 push, and the clap makes it 100. Now they just leave, save their lives, and go for the last push. It looks like Shadow Wizard Money Gang is going to take game two here in very quick fashion. Yeah, they just they reset. They get you know here in the middle point. They're all at full health. They've got a bunch of resources. I assume that some of them have their focus, maybe. Probably uh, probably a uh, team at. They're already going in. Yeah, there she goes. Here comes the team at ultimate. It's going to get what it can down. And that's already a good half of the health bar gone. This thing is just falling so quickly There's with only 12 seconds left. nothing they can left. do. It's just done for. That that's was, game ins two that was insane. That was insane. It's just, that was probably the fastest competitive game. Well, actually, that's not true. But that's we're gonna go into semantics yeah, there. Yeah, that um, that was that was like a very very forty six forty six thousand damage and thirteen kills on an eight minute game. What an insane player Panda Sniper is on that team at. What are uh, I mean? What are we expecting? Because if if uh. If Galantic's gonna bring out that Ezern again, you think? A Zenobia. If that's why you're bringing it up. Oh man. I, I, they're, they're picking a Zenobia, I think. Yeah, Zenobia's been on every comp for them so far, so I wonder what the ban will actually. Be. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think. Yep. They're picking a Zenobia. Okay. All right, team at ban. So yeah, team at respecting the team at uh, po uh, potential. Although, granted, you know, Galantic probably could have picked this first instead of banning it. So they're kind of a missed opportunity there, but better safe than sorry, perhaps if they don't want to use it. Is Picaro an Armani map? I think that it can be. Um, I'd say it's probably on the probably on the lower end. Yep, just making sure everyone understands Galantic one goes three. Not not as not as bad as Ward, right? Like Ward is like the worst Amani now. Yeah, right? Ward Heaven's Ward is probably well, pre Clash Heaven's Ward is pretty bad. Post Clash is also pretty bad. I mean, yeah, it's probably her worst map, but I, I don't think that she's unusable on it for sure. I've uh I've seen uh I've seen Amani play really strong on Heaven's Ward. So well, I don't think Amani's unplayable on any map. Yeah. I think she's perfectly playable on any of them. But it's it's whether or not she... There are some maps where she is just a compulsory ban. Yeah. For sure. Speaking of uh, possibly compulsory bans, what do, you, what do you think Shadow Wizard's thinking right now? What do you, what do you think was the problem on... Maybe the they're terrified team? of the Ezrin. Maybe they're... Yeah, maybe they're scared of the Zenobia. They're terrified. No, it's the Ezrin. If they're... I, I mean... They beat the Zenobia once, you know? They just beat the Zenobia, so I don't think they're that scared of it. The, the the Ezrin is the X-Factor, man. That thing did so much damage. It was so tanky. I don't think that Shadow Wizard is going to ban Margrave. I think Shadow Wizard want to utilize Margrave if at all possible. It is a Zenobia ban. Wow. This is... Uh... Mm. This is uh, I mean, interesting. We've seen Shadow Wizard Money Gang actually ban Zenobia before. Yeah. They seem to have a lot of respect for this character. And now they're playing against a team that actually picks it actively, so... Yeah, that's very true. Picking Amani. It was the Amani pick, okay. Oh, man. 
Pretty. I think this is the first game we've seen Amani in this tournament because it's either been banned or, or not picked. Yeah. And responding with the Ashlyn and Sven. I was not expecting the Sven as well, but Ash I mean, I figured it was going to be either one of the supports and then maybe like, I, th I thought they were going to grab the Margrave, honestly. This is good though, because I was, wow, double support first picks. Yep. Ooh. Um, this is good though because I was I was having a conversation with someone in the gigantic Discord earlier today where they're like, oh, you know, Imani's not good at a competitive level. Oh, let me let me tell you, Imani is really good at a competitive level, and you're about to see. Yeah. Which is just why Imani uh, usually doesn't uh, get or gets the ban. Oh yeah. Yeah, that person that person has probably not experienced a good uh, Imani in good hands, so. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can show uh, that person wrong. But I, again, I don't think Heaven's Word is really her best map. It is like she is playable. Don't get me wrong. It's Picaro, but yeah. Oh, sorry, Picaro. Duh. <laughs> I, we were talking so much about Heaven's Word, I can't remember now. Yeah. The double pickup of the tanks or the frontliners. Okay, so they say, listen, you're gonna tank our supports away from us. We have a strong DPS in the form of Amani. Let's just take two tanks, lock people down on the front line, and let Amani poke away at them. Yeah, so Galantic chose two frontliners on their last composition, but it was not Margrave, it was Gnosis and Paco. So I'm wondering, maybe that's maybe that'll be a, a key difference. You know, Margrave is a lot stronger of a character. He's more mobile, he's uh, he's more flexible, bigger health pool, more armor. Like, there's just a lot of positives of, of Margrave versus Gnosis. I think the Zandora, or the Zenobia ban, actually kind of makes sense here because you know they pick it if they have a, a team comp with imani they hovering Paco, Margrave, and Zenobia. they hovered mm. the zandora and they actually locked it in i've played against zandoras on this map before she has a couple of options for her mobility but i don't really think it's too convic too convincing of a tank pick but they're kind of left without options what in the world is going on here <laughs> this is a this is a strange team. There is not really damage right now, and uh, and Galantic kind of picking a possible poison option here, one or maybe even two. And honestly, Shadow Shadow Wizard Money Gang are gonna lose so much value. It's like not Ramsey funny. Beckett here. Yep. So Ramsey Beckett. Roland, okay. okay. Roland is Roland safe. So Ramsey is. Ramsey's the only poison application, but he's got some uh, he's got some good upgrades that allow him to have much higher uptime on that poison. Uh, and if he you know if he uses it properly, he can actually keep the enemy team poisoned a majority of the time. So a lot of this healing value is not very beneficial. This is gonna have to force like really early picks of of cleanse slash purify talents maybe on Sven and and even Ashlyn. I'm a big fan of this Galant uh, Galantic comp. So what is I Shadow? Really like what is Shadow Wizard Money Gang missing right now? They could possibly have another frontliner, maybe if they pick Gnosis or Wu. They could also really use. A, oh, a, the Kajir is another very good answer. I was this about to say the, a finisher. So yeah. Yeah, this is the answer to Imani that we haven't actually seen played very much. They haven't much had much chances to interact. Yeah. But I think that this is actually very favorable for the Kajir player uh, more often than not. Yeah, so the final final team here i mean i was gonna say it was it, for me it was a toss-up between uh it was a toss-up between a frontliner a shooter and an assassin and my, my my gut instinct was to say the assassin next so then just came up too early for me to catch it in time so this is um man zendora zendora is the solo like actual fighter style character unless Ashlyn goes melee, which we haven't seen. We haven't seen any Ashlyn actually go the melee build, which is a little surprising because I feel like a lot of people, uh, I feel like a lot of people were starting to understand how it was useful. There we go. So we will see Panda Sniper over there. We won't have any sound because we don't want to interrupt our comms and hopefully the uh, quality updates. There we go, a little better. Yeah, this is what we have to deal with right now until we get the spectator actually working properly. 70 to 70 right now in the middle of the map here. Actually, I need to go ahead and switch uh, these two teams because now Shadow Wizard Money Yang is on the left and 
do. You still with me, Sarzi? I think he might have disconnected again. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very sorry. I got, I have a uh, work, uh, a work message that I have to respond to here. I'm sorry. Oh uh, no, you're fine. I just wanted to make sure that you were okay because I, I, I don't know sometimes if you've had, you've disconnected. Yeah, that's twice. okay. That's okay. It, it does happen every once in a while. So getting a hundred hundred push in the favor of Laren's side actually here, uh, not doing a bunch of impact damage. That big shield is going to negate a bunch of the possible impact here but we'll see if uh well, actually they're totally keeping them here on this side they're, they're keeping them kind of locked here in the midpoint not able to really go back at all and attack their guardian so this would be this would be almost nothing gained from a <laughs> from this rampage and if panda yeah, actually stays a little too long yep he stayed He'll stuck. recover right back up, and just a tiny bit of damage on Gren, but 10 to Galantic at least. Oh, big save. Nope, I think he did still get him with the burning. Yep, he fell over eventually there. Gonna respawn. A little bit of action happening in the middle, it looks like, as expected. And I believe that is a, uh, I believe it was a Drake that went down on C right now. Trying to regather their footing. They're actually opting to summon on the Galantic side. So they're going to have good control on both sides and upgrading. You see on the mini-app, it's actually upgrading right now. They need to take advantage of that. And perhaps uh, perhaps Tana Sniper is choosing to go ahead and just do a little bit of back capping. Nope. He's going to go ahead and, and stick with the team. Oh, it's an obelisk. So that, that makes more sense why they weren't going for it. Saying a little got, got caught really bad there. Just sort of a... It looks like our... Oh, we do have a stream on. Do we've we? got it. We've got it. We've got a stream. Lovely. Let's go. So it's sixty to forty. We're jumping right back in. Not too far after we left off on Panda's stream. Yeah. There is an ob on the midpoint now. Just a little bit of damage coming out, but the tank's gonna be able to get his way out of there. This ob is looking pretty worse for wear. Avner's also looking worse for wear. He's kind of deep in there with a lot of enemies around him. He's going to need to pop his ult to try to get out of there safely, but he just can't do it. Nantor is going to find him at the end there. Yep. And this oh, is... wait, no. He did find his way out. Yep. Avner is out. Yep. And this is kind of the problem of, of this map. It's just so hard to really regain your footing if you lose control of middle because it's so narrow. But they Yeah, did... these hallways are, are brutal. Where is this? Uh, where's Amani setting up, by the way? She's kind of... She's in the back by, right okay. now. She isn't. She isn't set up just yet. I, yeah, she's think, probably setting up on the ship, if I had to guess. I think she got chased away. But yeah, she's going around the ship, and she's gonna go probably all the way around, wait for Wound to become vulnerable, or maybe she's just leaving it to her team to do it. Yeah. And it's so hard to. A lot of times, it's hard to tell the impact in in a setting like this than an Amani is making on the game because the spectator can't get it all the time. Big defense. But trust me. Yeah, when, when she's around, she's not around for this wound right now, but if she was around for this wound, that thing would be down. Yeah, big defense by Galantic there to hold, and this is an auto rune, uh, wound range for the most part. Um, so the next push that uh, next push that Galantic get will definitely do enough to stop that. Going back over here, neutralizing the Obelisk, but nope, he's going to play safe and back up. Let his team kind of take care of it. Thing will fall. But they, it was just an obelisk. They were smart to plant a, a creature that would get power there. So they yeah. can't hold on to bow. It does look like Amani is setting up on the ship. Big ult from uh, it, uh, <laughs> from Zendora here. Trying to find Margrave. He's so tanky, though. Oh, my gosh. The damage coming out from this team is crazy. Everyone is immediately at a quarter HP. Just everyone, this fight gets a lot of harder to take. Everyone using their focus is just constantly in, in this game right now. Everyone's so low all the time. It ends up being like a somewhat uh, a good trade in the favor of Shadow Wizard. Imani is kind of uh, finding a nice place to sit on this really long kind of hallway through mid here. Getting yeah. a lot of damage down, but it doesn't really seem like they found a kill just yet in that fight. The the Amani versus the uh, <laughs> Amani versus Kajir here. This is kind of what we expected Kajir to be going after her. But if he can't secure the kill, then he's kind of forced to run away, and you don't want to run into open line uh, sight lines. You gotta be careful. Margrave's trying to find some damage on the Zenobia, but she's pretty slippery with that speed aura. 
still 10. Oh, now we're making it even. Okay. So 60 to 60. Imani and Roland took the creature down by themselves. Yep. And Galantic still has control of the middle here. Possible fall of Margrave. Time, Margrave was taking damage. He's going to need to find his way out of there. He looks he like will he... will get to the bloomer, but Ramsey's still on him. Oh. oh sorry, a, a Kajir. Okay, Kajir does find it. Ramsey trying to protect him, drive them away, but he has to run too. Nope, yeah, he, he falls as well. Too. So if they actually kill this creature, this is a push for Shadow Wizard Money Gang again. It is. Yep, they get it. This is a big turnaround, but that's a good 100 power save. They couldn't quite get out. They stayed a little too long, but it was a, it was a good idea. It was it was a good play. It didn't get executed quite as well as it should have done. The they kind of split the fight up while the creature got taken down but their tanks took a little bit too much damage while they were in there and it just forced them to run out with just too little hp to defend the dive yep and unfortunate another push from galantic where they quite literally just can't go in because they were just not in position they were trying to just they were opting to choose to push people out of the territory so another 100 damage shield doing so little <laughs> it's and if you're if you're hitting the wound the amani is hitting you she yeah. is up on those rooms looking for you yeah we'll find muscle man with a snowball in the middle here he's looking really low the sven might be able to get him out he will get finished by roland at the end Kronk also looking really low and getting taken down by uh ramsey and this is starting to fall apart here again if they can get a really convincing push, it uh -oh. looks like Panda Sniper might have disconnected. Did he DC? Yeah, he definitely just stopped moving. Hopefully that gets a. Uh... Hopefully that gets kind of dealt with in the immediate future. I know what it feels like, Panda Sniper. <laughs> Big Roland focus doing quite a bit of damage just for the peeling of his team, trying to help them get yeah, out. Just getting his tanks out. But Kronked and Oru on the chase here. He will get a clap. That's one dead. You can dodge that, but it's really hard now. They changed the timings. Yep. But they will respond. Amani will find him after he's flying there, and Kronk will fall afterwards. That Amani ultimate must have been at least level two. That thing was doing a ton of damage. And now Ashlyn's trying to fight off this Margrave in the back line, while Amani has already torn her team apart. Yep. And it's a 150 push. This is an easy auto wound. Yeah, they didn't even really need to have that much of a power differential, but they're going to, you know, happily take it, of course, because now they can fully... Like, get back in position, maybe get a hold of this midpoint. They actually upgraded an obelisk again, and they upgraded, they've upgraded they upgraded B uh, to an adult bloomer of some kind. So this is looking really well for Galantic right now. Yeah, they're slowly just starting to close the vice grip on the game as they upgrade these creatures. The more you upgrade them, the harder it is to kill them, and it's just going to, at some point, you're just not going to be able to kill any creature. They're going to be so ahead in levels, and it's going to be very hard to come back from. Yeah, it does seem like... Does seem like Panda Sniper reconnected and finds a kill on Imani just randomly. Now he's got to run. Sometimes you just run around and find a low Imani. Get out of there. He's waiting and for Roland some stamina. Finish it off. One more shot. He will miss the last one. But he's on the rooftop still. Abner might find us at the end. He's got no way out. He's, he's got no stam. Okay. Doing a little bit of a distracting and full play for his time, teammates. They still haven't even killed the yeah. Wasn't Ramsey all in the up. back line, and the Imani is just starting to plink away at everyone's health total here. Yeah. The just... longer you stand in her sight line, the lower you're gonna get, and now Oru falls. And this is kind of exactly where I expected Imani to be fighting, because uh, the the easiest way to really get in is through that midpoint, and you can see from you can see either entrance into the middle from where Imani is standing right now. It is so it hard. Yeah. Here, they do hit the obelisk, but for what cost? If they all die, this was definitely not worth it. Yeah, they have to pop three focuses to do it. The Margrave Vault responds to it, but it's not really anybody falling just yet. Nish has to make his way out on one-tenth of an HP, and Kronk will follow him out. Panda Sniper gets picked out by the Imani and Roland, and now we're back to one tank, one tank, and a lot of DPS just slamming into each other. Paco takes a lot of damage, and he'll fall over, but the Imani ultimate takes Andorra on the back line, and now it's just DPS. Muscle Man at half HP trying to beat this Roland in the 1v1 and keeping himself out of the sight line of Omani, but he's forced him into it, and now it's a 2v1. Muscle Man getting really low and eventually Does he burn? Gonna fall, but the burn might he collect burns? at the end, and it will. <laughs> oh my gosh, Oru's so ridiculous. 
But uh, Galantic ended up getting this push, you know, one, like holding these middle points, forcing Shadow Wizard Money Gang to try to take these fights just to just to regain territory control, and it's not working out for them. Like they're getting the creature every now and then, yes, but obelisks don't give you any power, so they're 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 losing a lot more than they're actually gaining, and they can't keep the control here. Once again, Galantic not even going for wound. They really don't even care that much. I mean, there's a little bit of something going on back there. I believe they it's... had, yeah, they had they had teammates down as uh, well when when Liren got slammed or yeah. Gren got slammed. Yep. Yeah. Hannah Sniper, unfortunately. Hannah Sniper, in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yep. Yeah, he's he's not finding very much luck on this Kajir pick. It seems uh, they're they're playing very well against him. They need to get off of the ship. It's about to go down because it's clash. All right, they are safe from the ship. <laughs> you will fall right into the water when that thing's going down if you do so, not get off it. Uh, post. Oh, can we can we just see if switching to a player will stop that? Okay, it did. All right. Uh, so so post clash, the the Imani loses one of her safer options. Yeah. But she's still and now she. I mean, she still has the high ridge that she can use, and and that's probably what she's right. going to end up using. But the ship. But having the ship with your point there is easily the safest option on this map. Yeah. This, I mean, there is a possibility here, but now that the two creatures are closer together, that's more support that uh, Galantic has to hold these points. Yet again, Kindness, yet again, here, Panda. Here, half HP, getting really low to this Ramsey, and he's got to run all the way back through to the Amani to get his way out. Even one shot will get him down, and Roland will collect him instead. And now Paco can just run through this back line. There's a really low health Ashlyn there that he would love to have. Roland helps him find her. And Imani just this staying out here. Imani staying back here completely Oru's untouched. Yeah, or is dead. I saw him take three shots from the Imani. There's no way you're standing. Yeah, that Imani had full health and full stamina of that entire fight. So they, they, like, this Kajir pick is not working. They need to find something else that, to do to, like, go ahead and attack her. But at the same time, you could argue that getting resources over to Imani, it's just really difficult to do. She's got, like, a nice escape with her uh, jump or jump a little smoke bomb if she took that one she might not even have done it it doesn't matter this, no, she, this... took the, she took the days yeah days weekend. yeah it's even harder to kill her with that as kajir because you just days on top of him yep and then you just stay hidden they can't do anything this is a big tower power differential it could be it could be an auto wound i think it actually might be it looks like it's supposed to be 115 in class this and, should be an auto wound. and poor panda sniper they're just bullying him at this rate he's trying so hard to find this amani it's just not working Let's see if this does it oh it's super close not quite for once i was wrong they are coming in to finish though they yeah. don't need too much damage to finish this one yeah they do have 12 seconds to do it just a little bit of damage maybe from the um from the rolling Three to one, and even if they don't get out here, they, they can feed a rotation, I think. They're they're feeling okay. They have three lives. I suppose, but if they were all to die, then that leaves your middle point open, and if you get a summon on that point. Right, but you're you're three to you're three wounds to one wound. Like you're you'll take that trade. Yeah. As Ramsey will get a nice ultimate down to save himself from the Zandora, and that will leave her with no one to hit in the middle, and so her aura just falls off and she dies. Yep, Shadow Wizard Money Gang once again, not really able to stick to these fights, getting constantly bullied. A lot of damage here on the Ramsey. Well, Speaking look at of a lot of damage, that Roland all hits three players. That's a big chunk on all of them. And this fight gets a lot harder to play all of a sudden. Yep. They use the snail defensively to make him get out. That's also a really nice angle for Imani. Yeah, she's just kind of sticking to, <laughs> she's sticking to what she knows and and shooting all the way through the hallway. She's kind of found the sweet spot of where the uh, where the hidden wall is for the banners. Just able to shoot down that whole hallway, and uh, Shadow Wizard Money Gang just just can't. They don't have an answer here. It's a, uh, it's terrifying. Yeah, Imani is terrifying in general. Look how low Muscle Man is before the fight even starts. King Koopa can't even try. It's just it's it's so hard to do anything into this pick when it's just back there just tanking your health away. Yeah, big fights and they're they're doing. Gear falls damage. on the front line. Kronk is really low as well. 
Oh no, Kajir didn't fall. That was his ghost. Muscle Man is fl is flying in the air, and Imani says, "Yeah, I'll take your shots if you want to give them to me. Yep. You're, if you just want to stay up there, I'll I'll take those free ones. And yeah. it's another 150 push. I'd be surprised if they don't try to commit for this. I I still feel like they're gonna take it a little bit slow. They're gonna they're gonna opt to actually uh oh, opt to actually just take uh take their time. But they finally almost got the Imani, and still they were able to answer fast enough. They're prepping that creature for the uh, push just in case it doesn't get taken down. And yeah, they're backing up. They're they're letting one I... person do a bit of damage. They're going to take it slow. Okay, I can live with those. I think you could have committed to that with Imani. And, and I also, I, I'm wondering if Imani has ultimate, but... She probably does. She does. Oh, she just got it. I'm feeling so. like you could have you could have tried to commit to it, but yeah, it's it's reasonable either way. They have such control over this game now with all these level two creatures. Just take it slow. Yep. This is a this is a very hard uphill battle that Shadow Money uh, Shadow Wizard has to take care of. Yeah, fighting into a level two serve is really really tough. It does so much damage, and Muscle Man's fine met out. He will fall on the back line and Kronk to four man ultimate to find. There's just carnage everywhere that you look right now. The Margrave gonna hit the fourth shot on the Ashland and just slam her oh, into the ground. Oh no! And we're 50 ahead before any power has been collected. No one tell no no one tell uh, Paul that that someone took the slam ta uh, talent on on Margrave or he's gonna have a cow. <laughs> don't don't show him the stream. Don't show him the replay. <laughs> He'll be so mad. This is insane. 80 to 10 on. Quite literally, the life, the the last life that Shadow Wizard Money Gang have right now, and it's just gonna be, it'll be a capture. This is game three. <laughs> they're they're manually capturing F and a B adults that'll capture instantly. And there's almost nothing that they can do unless they find all of them right now and push them away. This is, I mean, the, we've talked about this before. The way you stop an auto, a quote unquote, auto wound like this. You have to go out and kill the enemy team before they even get to your wound. But, I mean, they're already here. It's already been decided. Amani's making her way in. You just can't do it in time. Yeah. It looks like this is going to be the end for Shadow Wizard Money Gang's run here. Good job, Galantic, taking the 2-0 against Shadow Wizard Galantic Money Gang. And it's Galantic versus Illusion in our finals. Yep. The, the good old NA versus EU. <laughs> just look at this, though. I mean... I don't, I don't, I really don't, I honestly really have no clue what Shadow Wizard Money Gang could have done. Like, there was a potential with the Khajiir to shut down that Amani, but they, they responded so quickly every single time. They defended her, and, uh, and Panda Sniper, Panda Sniper has 14 deaths, the poor guy. Like, they really, really bullied him. It's just, yeah, I mean, so he was, sad. He was really, really trying his best.